Freud found in his therapeutic work with adults that the way that they thought and felt about things was related to um, episodes in their early childhood. And he built up quite a detailed picture of the way little children, uh, children back to about the ages of three and four, represented things. And then Melanie Klein began analyzing children at that age. The change that made this possible was that she discovered that you could interpret children's play as reflecting their underlying motives in the same way you could understand adult dreams or um, the things that adults said in analysis. And just as Freud drew conclusions about the emotional lives of children from uh, his work, therapeutic work with adults, so Klein drew conclusions about the emotional life of babies from her work with children. Much of Klein's work was founded in a therapeutic clinical setting, but like Freud's, her account of development is one that was intended to apply to all children. And psychologists working in the Kleinian tradition today find her ideas and methods useful in accounting for everyday behavior. I thought that what we could see here um, was some very meaningful play about a little girl who, as she said when she looked at it, found some sort of mess there. And I would have thought, really, that the mess that she found was not simply a disordered play people house, but something to do with the, the sort of rather confused mess of feelings she had inside her, which were evoked by this rather strange situation. But she diligently set about trying to clear up this mess. And at, towards the end, I noticed that she was stealing glances at the camera people. She'd have a little look at me from time to time, as though she was saying, is this all right? Is this what I'm meant to do? I noticed that this sort of putting things in order, really, had a kind of effect of, in a way, stilling some of her anxieties. So for Melanie Klein, a child's play, any child's play, is significant, meaningful. It's meaningful because it reflects the child's concerns, anxieties, and internal conflicts as they play. But a child's play is seen as reflecting more than just thoughts and feelings about the present. Klein believed it also reflects earlier experiences. It reveals residues of the child's earliest representations, not just of the here and now, but from the distant past, from infancy. Melanie Klein takes it for granted, really, that in every child there is not only the child of, shall we say, three or four, like the little girl we've just seen, but also still there, the baby or the infant. Um, her picture of us all is of a model of um, the part of us that is most adult, which is, we hope, more or less in control of other parts of us, which, even if we are grown up, may be adolescent parts, child parts, or indeed baby parts still. Through her work with children, it became apparent to Klein that a crucial element in understanding an infant's representation of the world is that a newborn is, from the very beginning, oriented to develop relations, human relations and the relations are permeated with powerful, positive and negative emotional forces which colour the baby's experience. The close bond between a young infant and his mother centres on the relation to her breast. Although, from the earliest days onwards, the infant also responds to other features of the mother, her voice, yeah. her face, yeah. her hands, the fundamental experiences of happiness and love, of frustration and hatred, are inextricably linked with the mother's breast. What is known as object relations theory, which builds on Klein's ideas, sees good and bad experiences as being represented quite separately in the infant's developing mental world. The recurrent experiences of gratification and frustration are powerful stimuli for libidinal and destructive impulses, for love and hatred. As a result, 
the breast, inasmuch as it is gratifying, is loved and felt to be good. In so far as it is a source of frustration, it is hated and felt to be bad. According to Klein, babies don't represent their mothers as single, complete, enduring objects. Bad experiences are not, at first, represented as being connected with the good experiences. Babies have fundamentally fragmented representations of their mothers. Their first representations are part objects, bits of their mothers. For Klein, some of these part objects are associated with bad experiences of hunger, frustration and unhappiness. And they come to form part objects with hostile and persecutory qualities. The equally inevitable good experiences and the associations with the mother at these times go to make up in the baby's mind independent and unconnected part objects with wholly good qualities of satisfaction, love and tenderness. So at first these good and bad parts are effectively distinct mental entities. The baby does not have a sense of one enduring person who is the mother. Although their ideas have their roots in very different approaches to explaining and investigating psychology, Klein's idea of part objects and Piaget's concept of the impermanent object have some striking similarities. In both accounts, the developmental task for the baby in relation to both the world of animate and inanimate objects is to construct through experience mental representations of objects in the world. It's perhaps also a task that is never quite complete. There is a moment at which the baby starts in a kind of preliminary way, um, a, a piece of emotional work which is, really comes and goes all our lives. And that is a work of integration, which is a sort of stirring of a feeling that this person that the baby thought was so marvelous is the same person as the one they thought was so absolutely lousy and that the one that in a way they have been cursing and thinking was you know the witch of nightmares that was mummy too now this is a very long drawn out process and we see the children of the little girl we saw today as children of her age we see them dealing with exactly the same problem in their play very frequently it's the work of growing up really to understand that your parents are neither very very good nor very very bad you know they are, they are human and ordinary but despite researchers efforts despite an ever-growing understanding of the mental world of infants in the end the true nature of their experience necessarily eludes us when we understand one another in daily life and give a description of our experience to one another we take it that when the description is accurate we also know what it's like to have that thought or feeling so there's two things involved there's a description of a thought or a feeling and there's knowing what it's like to have it now i think we can make substantial progress and have made substantial progress in giving accurate descriptions of a baby's thought and feelings but we can't with regard to those descriptions know what it's like in the way we can know what it's like to feel adult things we can never think away our adult experience and actually inhabit the world of the child